hours through the morning. Then we dry out. We do dry out around 10, 11 o'clock, and then we're dry right through most of the afternoon. If you have any plans outside, you do not need to cancel them. But then later on tonight, around 5, 6 o'clock, especially towards the evening, more showers and storms are back in the forecast. The umbrellas will be out once again. It's going to be warm. It's going to be muggy. And again, heavy rain, a possibility later on tonight. I'll tell you what that means for your Sunday. We'll also take a closer look at some of the rain that's falling right now coming up in your full forecast. Gus, over to you. Raphael, thank you. We're going to get to some breaking news right now coming to us from the Middle East. The Pentagon says American commandos have killed a top ISIS official in a raid in eastern Syria. That ISIS official's name is Abu Sayyaf. We're told he was their commander in charge of oil fields. Defense Secretary Ash Carter says no U.S. service members were killed or injured in the firefight. Now, this just happened this morning. We'll continue to follow it and bring you updates as our broadcast continues here. Our other top story at this hour, of course, the ongoing search for a woman who tried to snatch a kid in broad daylight. The police are trying to find her before she strikes again. This happened in Central Park, and that's where we find News 4's Sheldon Dutez this morning with details and that sketch police want you to see. Sheldon. Hey, Pat and Gus, good morning to both of you. And because of that attempted kidnapping at the Hexford Playground, which is not too far away from where we are standing, some parents and nannies are understandably on guard and plan to keep a closer eye on their kids while visiting the park. And here's the reason why. This is the woman police are still trying to track down this morning. Investigators tell us that she was bold enough to walk off with a toddler, even though his nanny was standing nearby. Now, this all happened on Monday morning at the Hexer Park here in Central Park, but it wasn't reported to police until recently. Police say the woman walked up to the swing set. She picked up that toddler whose nanny was pushing the boy's brother and a swing right next to him. Well, the nanny was able to stop the woman before she left the playground, and the boy was not hurt, but park goers are still alarmed. That's really bold, especially when the nanny's like right there, so that made me be like, okay, we're going to have to make sure that I'm with her, and I make sure I brought two other people with me just in case. And we want to show you another look at the woman police are still searching for this morning. Pat and Gus, police only have a vague description of this woman, but they are asking anyone with any information about this case or if they recognize the woman in that sketch to give them a call. Reporting live in Central Park, Sheldon Dutez today in New York. All right, Sheldon, thank you for that. And the latest now on the tragedy on the tracks this morning investigators looking into the possibility that something struck that amtrak train that derailed early this week before it accelerated into that dangerous curve and derailed news force brian thompson has the latest now from the scene in philadelphia this is what the ntsb wants to look at some sort of projectile thrown at this septa train in the same general area and just minutes before the tragic derailment of amtrak 188 which took eight lives and left others in critical condition the conductor on 188 remembers hearing radio traffic with her engineer, Brandon Boston, talking about having a similar experience with the engineer of this SEPTA train. Saying that that train was shot at, so here's caution. She also believed that she heard her engineer say something about his train being struck by something. SEPTA now says there were not bullets, but some sort of object. A spokeswoman telling me we have had instances in the past where objects were thrown at the train in the same area of the track. SEPTA says it expects its crew to be interviewed by the NTSB this weekend. Meanwhile, the FBI was expected to examine the windshield of Amtrak 188 to try to determine if it was a rock or a bullet that damaged the window opposite the engineer. There is a, a circular pattern it emanates out. The initial NTSB probe did not find that windshield damage, though engineer Boston says he has no recollection of it or of anything in the seconds leading up to this crash, but he is cooperating. He said that he did not feel fatigued, nor did he report any illness. As that investigation continues, so does work to repair this stretch of track at what is called the Frankfurt Curve. The goal, to restore New York service at least partially by Monday. Because the object, a stone, a bullet, or something else hit the window opposite of where the engineer was sitting, it's not clear how it could have affected him. But it only deepens the mystery of 188 and why it accelerated to over 100 miles an hour in what became a dead man's curve. In Philadelphia, Brian Thompson for Today in New York. 
And we turn from Philly to home now, where mourners will pay respects today at the wake for Laura Fittimore, one of the eight victims of the Amtrak derailment. Fittimore was a real estate executive. She lived in Manhattan. She grew up in Queens. She was returning home from a memorial service for a friend's mother when the train derailed. Her wake is today and tomorrow at Fairfield and Sons Funeral Home in Manhasset on Long Island. A funeral service is scheduled for Monday. And Amtrak now says that rail service between New York and Philadelphia will not be up and running completely until Tuesday. Tracks and other equipment in that area still have to be repaired. New Jersey Transit, meanwhile, is honoring Amtrak tickets between New York City and Trenton. Amtrak says a modified service between Washington and Philadelphia will continue through Monday. And of course, stay with News 4 New York for the very latest on the tragedy on the tracks. And even when we're not on the air, you can get updated information from NBCNewYork.com. Another big story we're following this weekend, the convicted Boston Marathon bomber now staring down a death sentence. Shokar Sarnayev found out his punishment Friday, along with the rest of us. And as News 4's Jackie, Be Jackie Beckford found out, some people are satisfied with the sentence, others are not. This is 2014. This is Larry Grogan's medal from last year. The Franklin Lakes runner never got to finish the Boston Marathon in 2013. Grogan was just 50 yards from one of the exploding bombs. The memory still haunts him. I go through horror every time I hear a siren and every time I even think about anything to do with Boston. Still, were Johar Sarnayev will pay with his life for his role in the bombings and aftermath that killed four people does not bring Grogan any peace. Um, I have mixed views and kind of upset about the prospect of that another person dies. You know, sad enough for what's happened to this point. Sarnayev's high-powered defense attorneys had argued he was led astray by older brother Tamerlan, killed shortly after the bombings. But the jury voted unanimously that 21-year-old Sarnayev become the youngest person on federal death row. Victims and family members listened in solemn silence as the verdict was read. Sarnayev showed no emotion, at times slumping in his chair. Liz Norton, whose two sons each lost a right leg in the attack, says she's satisfied with the decision. I'm very grateful and, you know, like I said, I, I don't think there's any winners, but it was justice. He wanted to go to hell and he's going to get there early. But maybe not. A lengthy process of appeals will likely keep Sarnayev alive for a long time. This is going to last a decade or more. We're going to be hearing about this case for many years to come. Checky Beckford, Today in New York. The time is 9.07 and overseas. Searchers have now recovered all eight bodies from a U.S. Marine helicopter crash in Nepal. Crews found that wreckage early yesterday after an exhaustive search deep into Nepal's rugged terrain. The chopper disappeared from radar Tuesday with six American Marines and two Nepalese soldiers on board, all of them on a mission to deliver aid to remote villages rocked by Nepal's huge earthquake and its aftershocks. In Stanford, school officials are preparing to fire a school administrator over a sex scandal. The Advocate reports that officials there have placed Stanford High Assistant Principal Angela Thomas Graves on administrative leave. They say she failed to report that a teacher at that high school, Danielle Watkins, was having sex with an 18-year-old student and supplying him with marijuana. Watkins is now serving a five-year prison term for sexual assault. There is word this morning that a police officer is now cleared in the deadly shooting of a family's dog in New Jersey. That family pet named Otto was killed back in April when Officer Kyle Ferraro went to the wrong house in Wyckoff to investigate a report of a robbery. When he went into the fenced-in backyard of that wrong house, he said an aggressive German shepherd attacked him, forcing him to fire. The Bergen Record reports an internal investigation found no evidence of wrongdoing by the officer and that he followed state guidelines for the use of deadly force. Well, another weekend, another commuter alert, and this one's a major one. It's going to be a big headache for people who are planning to take the LIRR this weekend. A significant portion of the line is going to be shut down today and tomorrow from Mineola to Hicksville. And to make matters worse, you know this is happening as Rangers fans head into the city on Moss for game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Oy vey. The disruption was planned so that the railroad can demolish a bridge in Westbury. Obviously, the LIRR had no idea that the Rangers were going to make the playoffs. We're told the delays would be worse for riders on the wrong Konkoma and the Port Jefferson branches. The LIRR's warning riders to expect at least a 60-minute delay all weekend, which means plan for a 120-minute delay. Railroad <laughs> officials say they planned this project months ago and doing it during the playoff series is just an unfortunate matter of timing. 
Yeah, they probably could have done better on that. They know. I mean, I'm aware. I'm sure like most people want to go to the Rangers game. I mean, it's great that the Rangers are, you know, playing, but the, the, the work has got to work. It's well, if you have to take the LIRR this weekend, plan to add an extra hour of travel time to your plans. You can check the LIRR website to plan your route. But wait, there's more, Pat. Right now, more than 25,000 runners are competing in the Airbnb Brooklyn Half Marathon. That's great. Race began at 7 a.m. That's all good. But, you know, you might have some problems getting around several parts of the borough. So here's a look for you at some of the street closures along more than the 13-mile course. It all begins at Washington Avenue between the Eastern Parkway and Empire Boulevard. The course then runs along the Ocean, Ocean Avenue between Flatbush and Parkside Avenues and through Prospect Park. The final stretch of the length uh, is Ocean Parkway from the entrance ramp to Surf Avenue near the Coney Island Boardwalk. So, something to keep in mind today. Okay. Please forgive my cough. It's all right. That time of year. It is that time of year. Coming up, coming up on today in New York, we're talking about the Rangers there. John Chandler will preview the Rangers. Big game tonight as they prepare to zap the lightning. And speaking of lightning, check this out. A lightning show in Tornado Alley. And Raphael's got trivia. That's right, Pat. This afternoon is the second leg of the Triple Crown. The Preakness Stakes is in Baltimore, right here on NBC4. A lot is on the line for American Pharaoh. But can you keep up as we ask you things all about horses? Oh, Pat should do well with this one. Log on now. Yay! Trivia is coming up with sound effects and, and everything. Make your window decorating easy during Blinds to Go Spring Cellular Sale going on now. Take an additional 25% off our entire selection of energy efficient cellular shades. Choose from more than 15 styles and over 60 color options. Blinds to Go, Blinds for Life. When it matters most, you want a new breed of medical center pioneering the latest breakthroughs in research. You want brilliant minds applying the freshest, most innovative thinking on a modern campus dedicated to cancer, cardiology, women, children, orthopedics, and the neurosciences. And you want it to be one of the nation's best. Because coming here should be one of the smartest decisions of your life. Hackensack University Medical Center. When it matters most. Crowd's pretty big. Gotta love that 0% APR financing. You thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, yeah. Way! 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 It's the Toyota Time Sales event. Get in on the fun today. And right now, you can get 0% APR financing for a full 60 months on a new 2015 RAV4. Or lease a new RAV4 for just $199 a month. Thanks, Jim. Coming around again. Toyota, let's go places. No doctor can cure mesothelioma, but there can be justice when you have Weitz and Luxembourg fighting for you. The thoracic surgeon said, your John has mesothelioma and my advice to you is to get a good lawyer. I know Whites and Luxembourg has helped tens of thousands of people. Not because we say so, because of the 35,000 families who have made the informed decision to hire Whites and Luxembourg. I always feel like they're family. Whites and Luxembourg, your family's future, our passion. Make your window decorating easy during Blinds to Go Spring Cellular Sale going on now. Take an additional 25% off our entire selection of energy efficient cellular shades. Choose from more more than 15 styles and over 60 color options. Blinds to go, blinds for life. Today's weather is brought to you by McDonald's. Stop into McDonald's for any size Hot McCafe coffee for just $1. McDonald's, I'm loving it. All right, now here's a look at Mother Nature's intimidating power on display in western Nebraska Friday. This supercell storm five hours west of Omaha produced golf ball-sized hail and wind gusts of 70 miles an hour. Fortunately, no tornadoes. There have been a lot of them out west the past week or so. No tornadoes reported here. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. But I did look out the window just a little while ago, and uh, it was pouring down in Midtown. One of those things. Oh where, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking around, figuring out whose umbrella am I going to steal? <laughs> <laughs> you would do that. Well, I might have tracked one down. <laughs> <laughs> I might too. But we needed the rain. I mean, everyone. A lot of people on social media are kind of thankful for the rain today, I which is uh, different. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Normally on a weekend you wouldn't get that kind of response, but uh, it's been so incredibly dry for so long. The pollen has been off the charts. It's just been dry and dusty. Mm -hmm. We soaked it all away. Mm -hmm. For now, anyway. Of course, the pollen will come back with a vengeance. We know that happens. It will. It will. 
give the trees some time. They'll send out another bloom for us. Uh, but yeah, right now we're calming things down 59 degrees. And we have mostly cloudy skies outside. The rain has ended at this hour, but there may be more rain later on today. There's a live look at storm tracker and you can see we're tracking rain now moving through Nassau and Suffolk counties dry in the city. Light showers in the Hudson Valley. Some of the heaviest rain northern Nassau County. Take a look at some of the towns that are getting soaked at this hour. West Hills, Hicksville, uh, these showers and even a few embedded thunderstorms moving towards Dix Hills over the next couple of hours. Suffolk County, you're seeing rain in Brentwood and Holbrook. Sayville and Isop also dealing with some pockets of heavy rain as you head throughout your Saturday morning. Temperatures are generally in the 60s, 61 City Island. It's 62 for you in Middle Village. Uh, temperatures in the 50s and 60s in the Hudson Valley, 56 in Poughkeepsie, and it's 66, a little warmer down the shore in Long Branch. Later on today, it does get much warmer. We get that sunshine going. It's going to be a little muggy, but temperatures into the 70s by the time the Brewers are taking on the Mets. This is 710, but unfortunately 710 that's exactly when the rain chance returns to the tri state later on tonight. So that game may be interrupted. Here's a look at future tracker around 11 o'clock today. The rain is gone. It shuts down nicely. You can see clearing skies, sunshine and a warm day ahead by four o'clock. We're still dry. So that's our chunk of dry weather today. Watch the storms approaching from the northwest though by 5 6 p.m. We're tracking another batch of showers and thunderstorms. Some of them gusty like what we saw this morning. Six, seven, eight o'clock. More of the same showers and storms continue this evening and then and they're gone by around 1 a.m. A couple of showers may linger into tomorrow morning, but by the time we're waking up 8 a.m. tomorrow, it looks good. Sunny skies, humid tomorrow with temperatures well into the 80s, and you can see by 2 p.m. tomorrow also staying nice and dry. For today, it's not going to be dry all day long. Obviously, we've already had some rain and more rain later on this evening. 79 for your high temperature. Enjoy the dry times in between. 67 for your low overnight tonight. It's a mild and muggy night. Watching out for a few showers and storms there. Take a look at the seven day forecast. 79 today, not too bad, but 85 tomorrow, muggy and hot, very summery, and then much cooler on Monday, more ups and downs, 68 for your high. Stay up to date with us and the ups and downs with the News 4 New York app. Tap the News 4 logo right there in the corner, and then you can select the weather tab, see the latest forecast, interactive radar, and you can learn how to submit your very own weather video. The News 4 New York app for iPhone is available in the App Store right now. Pat and Gus, over to you. Right, thank you. It's 916, and in sports, good news and bad news about the Yankees pitching staff. And and later day, as we were talking about earlier, the Rangers begin their next mm. step toward the Stanley Cup. Here's John Chandler with sports. Good morning, everybody. Good news for the Yankees. Masahiro Tanaka threw a bullpen session Friday with no issues. Now the bad news. Chase Whitley has a torn tendon in his right elbow. He's headed for the 15-day disabled list and possibly surgery. What's hosting the Brewers at City Field? Rangers and Lightning opening up the Eastern Conference Finals this afternoon. One key in this series, threshold for pain. Tampa Bay says former Ranger Ryan Callahan's day-to-day. -day. He had an emergency appendectomy on Monday. The Blue Shirts are confident Dan Boyle is good to go for Game 1 today. Defenseman was on the ice in yesterday's practice. That's a good sign for sure. And head coach Elaine Vigneault says there's always hope Matt Zuccarello could stay, skate later in this series. But today, the focus is going to be on Callahan. Remember, he was traded last year for Martin St. Louis. There's players on both sides that uh, have switched teams, and obviously uh, right now uh, the other team's in the other guy's way, and it goes for both sides. So uh, excited for the opportunity to battle for uh, a chance to play the Stanley Cup final. You know, I think they were one of the best teams in the league to, to score goals, so we, we, we have a challenge ahead of us here. So. Um, Today is all about preparation and, and doing the right things, talk about the right things, and, and get ready. It's got to be strange for Martin St. Louis looking across the ice at a team that he played 13 years for, the Tampa Bay Lightning, in town to face the Rangers now in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Starts at 1 this afternoon. You can catch all the action right here on NBC4 New York. Don't forget, that'll be followed by the Preakness Stakes also here on NBC4. American Farrell looking to follow up his Kentucky Derby win with a victory in the second leg of the Triple Crown. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, everyone. For Today in New York, I'm John Chandler. And still ahead on this Saturday morning, will this Toy Story have a happy ending? What's next for mm. FAO Schwartz? And Produce Pete is here with a vegetable that's at its best this time of year. <laughs> hey, good morning. Once known as a harbinger of spring, that means it's the first of the spring vegetables. Asparagus are in the lily family, so you want to treat it just like you treat a flower. So coming up next, all you want to know about asparagus. And here comes my little flower. Here, here. <laughs> here, smell that. Treat it like a flower. So if you see, mm. if it's it smells good, <coughs> it's gonna be good, that's all. Just like a lily. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. <laughs>
Monday and Tuesday. It's the Voice Live Finale event. You are a superstar. Sawyer, Megan, Joshua, or Corinne. Who will be the voice? For me, you've already won this thing. The Voice Finale Live Monday and Tuesday here on NBC. Tuesday, May 26th. When people see this on TV, they're going to freak out. Season 10 takes talent to the extreme. Is something going wrong? Call 911. Season 10 of America's Got Talent, Tuesday, May 26th on NBC. When our daughter turned 21, we wanted to give her a special gift to mark her entry into adult life. One that signified quality, strength, and beauty. We thought of Stickley. The pieces we gave her are just a start, and now a focal point in her new apartment, and a reminder of how she should greet every day. Now through Memorial Day, take advantage of great store-wide savings at Stickley, Audi & Company. Talk with your doctor. The waiting is over. It's time to start your summer off right at the Hyundai Memorial Day sales event, where you can get behind the wheel of the Sonata. U.S. News & World Report's 2015 Best Midsize Car for the Money for 0% APR for 75 months. And the five-star overall safety rated Elantra, loaded with luxury car technology. Now just $129 a month. So visit your local Hyundai dealer today for incredible deals on every model on the lot. But you've got to move fast because this event ends June 1st. There are a lot of channels on your TV, but only so many you want to watch. What if you could pay for the types of channels you want and not the ones you don't? Now, Fios brings you a totally new way to customize your TV at a price that's totally affordable, starting at $74.99 per month. Get custom TV, including internet and phone, price guaranteed for two years. Plus, get a $300 Visa prepaid card with your two-year agreement. Go to GetFios.com today. Cable just gives you channels. Fios gives you choice. That song just makes you want to snap your fingers, doesn't it, Pete? <laughs> well, we're right in the middle of asparagus season, and while it's available year-round at really high prices, springtime is the perfect time to enjoy this delicious veggie for a lot less money. Produce Pete's here to tell us more about asparagus. Hey, good morning. Hello, good morning. Pete. How are you? I so wonderful. what I brought you was local asparagus. So we have some Canadian and we have some Jersey Ooh. asparagus. You've noticed the last few weeks that asparagus have been very high in price mm -hmm. in the supermarkets and all, but now we have have the state of Washington in, we have Canada in, we have New Jersey, and we have some offshore stuff coming out of uh, Peru. So there's a lot of asparagus in right now, which drives the price down. I That's could. why. You'll see asparagus probably at a $2.99 price in your supermarket or your green grocer with sales as low as $1.99 right now. Great. So you'll see them. So this is the time to buy them. The first is the Jersey asparagus. This is what we're looking at, the Jersey asparagus. Grown in South Jersey, actually grown by a friend of mine, Freddie Nicolosi, who I have to give a shout out to, who's has isn't feeling well right oh. now. So I hope you feel better. Me too. And we need all the farmers that we can keep, you know, get. So make sure you. Uh, I hope you feel better. Take care of yourself, so, Freddie. So anyhow, this is uh, what we call the Jersey grass. Now, the reason that people say, well, why is asparagus so expensive? Because they're very labor intensive. Oh, really? You have to remember that it's hard to grow asparagus, and they're not picked by machine. They're actually you bend over in the field and you cut Whoa, every one, every really? single one. That's a lot of cutting. That's if you look at just this cutting, right here. Pete. This one bunch would right. wear me out. When you buy the Jersey asparagus, what you want to look for is you want to look for a nice green asparagus. Uh -huh. You're going to see a little white at the end. That's because it's a characteristic of the Jersey. Mom used to do this. Where it breaks is what she used. She never threw this away. She used this for soup. She I used this to say, eat it. I That's she it. Didn't throw it away. Now, when you get to this is the Canadian asparagus. It seems That's to be a it. little bit more green, yeah. long green, which we call long green. That's what you want to look for. Now, both of them taste good. People always say to me, well, I like the thin ones, I like this. And yeah. the, the size of the asparagus means absolutely nothing. What means something is freshness. Freshness means that that's when the asparagus are good. Don't laugh at me. No, <laughs> it's a family don't, show. Don't please. laugh at me. So what you want to look for is you want to look for that long green part. Okay. You, like I said in the tease when Terry came in to smell the asparagus uh -huh. there, you want to look for the asparagus, treat it like you would a flower. Mm -hmm. When you bring it home, put a little dish of water in there, stand it in the water like that. Okay. Never get the top wet. wet. Okay. Never. And you see the top of this, this, this asparagus? <laughs> 
It never should be going to seed. You see how that looks like a regular plant that's re that's just developed. How does it, it look now when, when it, it goes, goes to, to seed. seed? In other words, you'll see asparagus like this. Here's here's a quick one here, like this that's starting oh. to go to seed a little bit. That means that the asparagus starting to get old. They're out there. They're available. <laughs> You'll, okay, that's I'm all right. sorry. You're, this could be my uh, my my perfume. It's your that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank so you, they're, Pete. Out, they're out there. They're available, and and what they're, you're going to buy them at a reasonable price. Love Betty it. did, and the less you do with asparagus, the better off you are. Just a little cheese. That's a little, a little cheese, saute. and that's it. Lovely. Thank you, that's Pete, it. and thank you, Betty. Send your questions to Pete at ProtusPete.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Stay tuned. We're coming right back. Lightly brown in a coconut butter reduction with a dash of sea salt. Simmer over low heat. Allow time to chill before serving. The Charisma Gourmet Inclusive Experience. Get a taste of it now at El Dorado Spa Resorts and Hotels. finance with Valley National Bank for just $499? Absolutely. With no points, no search and title fees? Of course. And no hidden Valley fees? You can count on it. In fact, it's so easy. The only thing you'll have to worry about is what to do with the money you save. I'm Jerry Lipkin, Chairman and CEO of Valley National Bank. You can refinance your home for just $499 and start saving today. around the corner. Start the new season with Raymour and Flanagan's Memorial Day sale. Every style on sale. Believe me, they got furniture for your budget. Fresh in any room with the best brands at low, low sale prices. Have you checked out the financing? No interest for 60 months, all delivered in three days or less. The Memorial Day sale going on right now at Raymour and Flanagan. This portion of the news is brought to you by Raymore and Flanagan, furnishing your style. Just about 9.30 on a Saturday morning, the Queensboro Bridge, 59th Street Bridge, Ed Koch Memorial Bridge, whatever you call it, a fine span across the East <laughs> River. Though a little overcast this morning, some showers out there, and we got to talk about that. Though, you know, for people with allergies, we've been saying this, and this has got to be one of the worst years I think people can remember. They're calling it the tsunami. The, uh, rain, is, the rain is a good yeah. thing, and not a washout. I know no one really likes rain on a Saturday morning. Good to be with you. I'm Gus Rosendale. It is what it is, yeah. and we're happy to see it in some circles. I'm Pat Battle. Glad to have you with us. So let's go to Raphael and see how much rain we're going to get on this Saturday. Raph? Hey, guys. Yeah, I think we're okay with it because it's not an all-day washout. Now, that's the thing. We have some rain this morning, rain later on today, but in between there will be plenty of dry hours for you to enjoy outside. And we are getting good scrubbing, scrubbing that pollen away right now. You can see here's a live look at Storm Tracker. Still quite wet across Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk counties dealing with rain at this hour. Maybe you have a weekend escape plan down the Jersey Shore. Well, taking a look at the weekend here, places like Asbury Park towards Ocean City, that shower and storm risk today in the afternoon and evening, 74 degrees and tomorrow more of the same 75, but drier for Sunday. Sunday, a very slight chance of a shower storm for the Jersey Shore. Obviously, we're seeing some showers across Long Island.
right now. Temperatures stay in the 60s today. Tomorrow, that's the nicer day for places like Montauk and the Hamptons. 74 degrees for Sunday with some more sunshine. Into the Hudson Valley, it's going to warm up very nicely later on today. If you're heading into the Catskills, maybe the Delaware Water Gap, a risk of storms later on this evening. 80 degrees up to 85 tomorrow north and west of New York City. So now you've got your escape route planned. We'll take a look at your full forecast coming up in just a few. Pat, over to you. All right, thank you so much, Raphael. We have breaking news right now from the Middle East where the Pentagon says American commandos have killed a top ISIS official in a raid in eastern Syria. The ISIS official's name, Abu Sayyaf. We're told he was the commander in charge of oil fields for ISIS. Defense Secretary Ash Carter says that no U.S. service members were killed or injured in that firefight. This happened yesterday, but we're just getting word of it now. Also hearing... I beg your pardon, that Abu Sayyaf's wife was captured and that the commandos freed a young Zaidi woman who apparently was being held by the couple as a slave. Again, ISIS leader Abu Sayyaf killed in a special ops raid in Syria. Well, another story happening right now. Police continuing to search for a woman who tried to snatch a child in broad daylight. Yeah, they're trying to catch her before she strikes again. This happened in Central Park yesterday. News 4 Sheldon Dutez is live there this morning with some anxious parents, I'm sure, Sheldon. Well, Pat and Gus, good morning to both of you. That uh, attempted kidnapping happened not too far away from where I'm standing at the Heckscher Playground. And it has some parkours, as you can imagine, rethinking their safety, especially since police are still trying to track down this woman this morning. Now, investigators tell us that this woman was bold enough to walk up to the child and walk off with him, even though his nanny was standing nearby. Now, this all happened on Monday morning at the Heckscher Playground here in Central Park, but it wasn't reported until police uh, till recently. Now, police say the woman walked up to the swing set and picked the two-year-old boy whose nanny and was pushing the boy's brother in a swing nearby. The nanny stopped the woman from walking out of the playground, and the boy was not hurt in all of this, but some park owners are still anxious. That's really bold, especially when the nanny's, like, right there, so that made me be like, okay, we're going to have to make sure that I'm with her, and I make sure I brought two other people with me just in case. There's more police now, and uh, I hope that will make it even safer than it is already. Yeah, and between that attempted abduction and a robbery last week near the playground police and the NYPD have stepped up their patrols in the park, specifically in the area near Heckscher Playground. Now, as far as the attempted abduction, Pat and Gus, police only have a vague description of that woman, but they are asking anyone who might recognize her from that composite sketch to give them a call. For now, we are live here in Central Park. Sheldon Dutez, Today in New York. Sheldon, thank you. And now to the latest on the tragedy on the tracks in Philadelphia. The FBI and the National Transportation Safety Board trying to figure out whether the Amtrak train that derailed was hit by some sort of object right before the crash. Investigators want to examine this SEPTA train. It appears to have been struck by an object in the same general area, SEPTA being Philadelphia's transit system. Now, just minutes before Amtrak 188 derailed, that train reported that it had been hit by something. And the NTSB says a conductor on the Amtrak train remembers hearing radio transmissions from her engineer, that's Brian Bostian, Bost Bost excuse me, talking to the SEPTA train engineer. She says she heard Bostian say that his train had also been struck. The NTSB met with Bostian yesterday, and he says he has no recollection of anything that happened in the seconds before that crash. And here at home, mourners will pay respects today at the wake for Laura Finnemore, <laughs> one of the eight victims of the Amtrak derailment. Finnemore was a real estate executive. She lived in Manhattan, grew up in Queens, and she was returning home from a memorial memorial service for a friend's mother when the train derailed. Her wake is today and tomorrow at Fairfield and Sons Funeral Home in Manhasset on Long Island, a funeral service scheduled for Monday. And more than 150 midshipmen from the U.S. Naval Academy gathered to say goodbye Friday to another Amtrak victim, midshipman third class Justin Zemser. The 20-year-old from Queens was the youngest victim classmates from the Naval Academy. They were busted in from Maryland and they joined Zemser's family and high school friends at the funeral. Andrew Salzman, who we talked to, says he was with Semser just hours before the derailment. Very humble, very, very passionate young man. Uh, uh, that's really all I can say about him. He was, he was, he was great. He was, nothing is overinflated that you hear about Justin. Semser was traveling from the Naval Academy to his Queen's home when he was killed. 
Well, if you are in Newark today and you see scores of officers and emergency personnel at the Washington Street Light Rail Station, do not be alarmed. New Jersey Transit tells us they're conducting an emergency response drill there, and that means that light rail trains will not be stopping at the Washington Street Station for a few more hours. You can use the Military Park Station right there on Broad Street instead. And new this morning, an Egyptian court sentenced former President Mohamed Morsi to death for his role in a mass prison break four years ago. Egypt's top Muslim the the theologian will now give his opinion on the sentence before the court makes a final ruling next month. Morsi was arrested during a 2011 uprising and escaped several days later. He went on to become Egypt's first freely elected president a year later. The time is 9.36, and Shohar Sarnayev is headed to death roll for his role in the Boston Marathon bombings. The defense had argued that Sarnayev was led astray by his older brother, but in the end, the jury didn't agree and voted unanimously yesterday to sentence him to death. However, it's likely to be a long time before that sentence is actually carried out. The appeals process could take years. A former top aide to Osama bin Laden is sentenced to life in prison for his role in two deadly U.S. attacks. Khalid Al-Fawaz was convicted in Manhattan federal court of helping to recruit people to carry out the 1998 bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. 224 people were killed in those attacks, including a dozen Americans. Al-Fawaz's attorney argued that he was less responsible for the bombing compared to others. Later today, fallen NYPD detective Brian Moore will be honored in the community where he served. Community leaders will hold a memorial service at Tribute Triangle Park, that's in Glen Oaks, Queens. Organizers there say they want to pay tribute to Detective Moore Pat and they want to show support for the NYPD. The memorial is set to start at 1 p.m. If you come, you're asked to bring a memorial candle and a blue ribbon. Glen Oaks is part of the 105th Precinct where Officer Moore was assigned. Well, two young girls are getting a special honor from the city after their incredible act of kindness for the families of slain detectives Rafael Ramos and Wen Jin Liu. Nine-year-old Gretchen and seven-year-old Victoria Lisney will be honorary starters at the first ever One World Trade Center benefit climb tomorrow. After the holidays, the two sisters from Wisconsin donated their Christmas money. $20 each to the Stephen Siller Tunnel to Towers Foundation. That foundation in turn paid off the detectives' homes. Gretchen and Victoria met with Commissioner Bratton yesterday and he thanked them for their generosity. Funeral arrangements are still pending for legendary blues guitarist B.B. King, but tributes to this extraordinary artist coming in from all over the world, as you can imagine. The words, rest in peace, posted now on the marquee of the B.B. King Club on 42nd Street near Times Square. Fans are leaving flowers and cards in memory of a man who influenced nearly everyone who ever picked up a guitar or listened to the blues. With his trademark Gibsons, he nicknamed Lucille. King recorded more than 50 albums, earning him the title King of the Blues. He was a beacon for all of us who love this kind of music, and, and I thank him from the bottom of my heart. A coroner says that B.B. King died after a series of strokes linked to his long battle with diabetes. He was 89 years old. And a class act without question. One of the city's legendary stores here closing its doors at its flagship location, at least. F.E.O. Schwartz announced Friday that in two months, its Fifth Avenue store is shutting down for good. The company blames high rent and rising operation costs. A spokesperson says the company's now looking for a new home somewhere else in Midtown. Well, some students heading to prom in Connecticut tonight could be turned away at the door if their dresses don't make the grade. Last Friday, officials at Shelton High School announced they'd be on hand to inspect students and turn them away if they showed up in prom dresses that they deem inappropriate. Last week, 150 students submitted photos of their dresses, and after a review, well, six of them were rejected. All right. I wish somebody had turned me away. I was in a pretty bad tuxedo. <laughs> I had Proto's Pete says his was plaid. It wasn't inappropriate. It was just, there was gold lame. And, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Gold lame? Seriously? It, it was, and I paid extra for it, too. <laughs> I bet you did. There was perhaps a bolo tie in the mix, too. I paid extra to get the exclusive at the school. Yeah, it was a Say disaster. no more. Say no more. I want ah, pictures. She wore a yellow dress. <laughs> uh, yeah. She's a nun now. Still ahead on today in New York. <laughs> Oh, some of the best food in Harlem. You can enjoy it all this weekend. We'll tell you about that. But first, Storm Team 4's Raphael Miranda returns with a check of today's forecast. You are watching Today in New York.
Welcome to Prince Edward Island. Come and experience Canada's birthplace. Discover a rich history while exploring a timeless heritage. Tee off on some of North America's finest links, where pristine greens sparkle like jewels. As the sun sets, enjoy a beautiful meal where the most delectable ingredients are served fresh. From the land and the sea, flavors come alive when you add a little island. Prince Edward Island. Why are you here? Why are any of us here? Windows, people. Windows are the eyes into the soul of the home. Ugly soul. Ugh. Don't make your life difficult. When your client needs blinds, go to blinds to go With the largest selection of beautiful blinds and shades, custom sized and guaranteed for life, they're a designer's best friend. Trust me. They make window decorating easy. Take 25% off all cellular shades during our spring cellular sale going on now. Families who need one. For the first time, parents from all over are joining forces for all kids, coming together to raise the charter cap and pass the education tax credit to help open new charter schools and invest new dollars in all schools. Together, they go hand in hand. Tell the assembly to stand up for all children. When it matters most, you want a new breed of medical center pioneering the latest breakthroughs in research. You want brilliant minds applying the freshest, most innovative thinking on a modern campus dedicated to cancer, cardiology, women, children, orthopedics, and the neurosciences. And you want it to be one of the nation's best. Because coming here should be one of the smartest decisions of your life. Hackensack University Medical Center. When it matters most. Let's play True or False with Verizon Fios. Verizon claims to offer a white glove installation service. Is this true or false? The answer is false. Sorry, Verizon. Your white glove service is what Optimum just calls service, which is everything you do and more. Let's play True or False with Verizon Fios. Verizon claims they're all fiber optic. Is this true or false? The answer is false. Sorry. Actually, Verizon still uses regular cable in the home. Better luck next time. All right, Rasp's been tracking some storms. We've seen it just since we started this morning. It was all up in the Hudson Valley, yep. and now even to our own, uh, you know, view on the plaza. Mm -hmm. And it's dry again already. This is a quick moving oh, system okay, this morning. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get a break, which we're seeing now already. No mm -hmm. one has the umbrellas outside right now. Good. Even some sunshine, reports of some sunshine around Newark Airport, so that's good news. We do have dry hours to get through later on today, even though we have the rain out there this morning, and then the rain comes back later on today. So it's okay. a sandwich of rain with some dry weather in between the bread. Uh, there's look outside right now and you can see lots of clouds not a whole lot of sunshine just yet but that'll come over the next few hours 61 degrees now we have mostly cloudy skies or partly sunny depending on how you look at things let's take a look at storm tracker and you can see the rain still off to the south and east you're not dry yet across suffolk county in fact we have some heavier downpours moving through western suffolk county moving towards the south and east passing through west babylon at this hour headed towards islip and oak beach over the next 15 to 20 minutes or so down the Jersey Shore we go into Monmouth County, Ocean Grove towards Avon by the Sea in Belmar. All dealing with rain this morning, but it's getting lighter and lighter as the minutes go by. That's a good trend, and that trend will continue over the next couple of hours. And then we see the sun, and that's going to boost these temperatures that are stuck right now in the 50s and 60s. 61 in Kingston, but it's 59 in Rhinebeck, 55 degrees, cool in Hopewell Junction. And temperatures in the 60s down the shore, 64 in Long Branch, 55 for you at this hour in Monticello. Here's a look at Future Tracker. By lunchtime, you can't find any rain here. All the green is gone, and that's good news. We're dry through lunch through the middle of the day through five o'clock, not tracking any rain until these storms form north and west of New York City around five. So here in the city, we're still dry then, but look what happens around seven, eight o'clock. Showers and storms get closer to the city, Westchester County, and we could see more of those heavy downpours, more lightning, just like what we saw this morning. That will continue through the evening hours, right through dinner time, not drying out until overnight tonight around 3 a.m. Heading into Sunday morning, sunshine returns. Tomorrow's going to be a beachy day. Temperatures well into the 80s, higher humidity and dry. Maybe a spotty storm through the afternoon, but I think most of us keeping it dry for Sunday, and that's great news, especially after that rain we had this morning. Pollen report for today. Well, this is one of the reasons why we're enjoying the rain because it's washing some of this down. Tree pollen has been very high for days, even weeks, and weed pollen also into the mix today. Mold is low. Weed pollen is moderate. Getting a break this afternoon. 
hopefully 79 degrees for your high temperature. So it does warm up very nicely today. Spotty storms later on this evening, mainly after five, six o'clock overnight tonight, early showers and storms 67 degrees. One of those mild and muggy nights ahead and tomorrow up to 85 degrees. That's the warmer half of the weekend. Watching out for a spotty storm later on in the afternoon, and then drier and cooler on Monday, Tuesday, another chance of rain. You want to stay up to date with all these changes with the News 4 New York app? Tap the News 4 logo in the corner and select the weather tab. See the latest forecast, interactive radar, and you can learn how to submit your own weather video. The News 4 New York app for iPhone is available in the App Store right now. And while you're online, of course, you want to play our interactive trivia game. Today's game is all about horses as we gear up for the Preakness Stakes this afternoon. Pat's sound effects will be with us as well right here on NBC4. Log on now. Horse trivia is next. Big city means big problems. So you need the biggest investigative team in New York. Tracking, digging, exposing. On it. This is the team who delivers. This is the I-Team on News for New York. Sleepy's Memorial Holiday prices are unbeatable. Get up to half off nearly every mattress in the store. Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, and more. Save up to $400 off our new Beautyrest Phenom collection. Save up to $300 off select Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Plus, get a Visa gift card when you add an adjustable base and free delivery on Serta iSeries, iComfort, and more. So hurry into Sleepy's for up to half off throughout the store. Sleepy's, the only mattress professionals. Be part of the plan because it only takes 20 minutes because you have your own reasons. We can end the epidemic. Get tested, get treated, stay safe. End AIDS. Rise and shine and enjoy your morning at McDonald's with a cup of freshly brewed McCafe coffee. Now you can add two sausage biscuits with egg for just $3. McDonald's, adding more love to your morning. It's called an honest day's work, but thousands of construction workers aren't getting an honest day's pay. Developers getting millions in tax breaks to build housing aren't ensuring their workers who build it earn a middle class wage. Some workers even report being paid as low as $12 an hour. And irresponsible developers like L&M are using contractors with track records of stealing workers' wages. People who work in the city should be able to afford to live in the city. Public funds come with public responsibilities. Tell Albany, fix 421A. Baffled? Busted? Broken? Better get Becaro. And Monday at 5.30, I'm kicking off my week-long special called Four Ways. First up, four ways to improve your credit score. Monday at 5.30 on News 4 New York. We are back, and it is time to play this morning's interactive trivia game. But first, let's congratulate last week's winner, Peter Neshesny of Fairlawn, New Jersey. And if Peter's name sounds familiar to you, here's why. He is a three-time winner. Oh. Wow. Hey, yes, sir. and last week he won on his wife's birthday. Oh, great. So congrats, Peter. He's won the beat. Raphael, take it away. But does he know about horses? We'll, we'll find mm. out, won't we? All right, guys, it is trivia time. Today's topic is all about Preakness trivia. For those of you joining us for the first time, here's how you play. Just log on to NBCNewYork.com slash trivia. You can play on any smartphone, tablet, computer, or web-enabled device. You have to hit refresh because your browser must be up to date. Once we officially begin, the questions will pop up right here on your TV screen, and you'll have 12 seconds to choose an answer by selecting the options on your browser. While you're online, you can chat with your fellow trivia players. They always have a great conversation going. All right, let's get that countdown clock started, guys. Today's topic topic is Preakness Trivia. Today, Preakness Stakes is known as the second jewel in horse racing. Second jewel, by the way, that'll help you with the question coming up. Pay attention. And you can catch the action right, you need the hints, you need, right here on NBC4, starting this afternoon, starting at 4.30 p.m. Remember, the only way you can play is by logging on to NBCNewYork.com slash trivia. You want to answer as quickly as possible. It's those speedy correct answers that are really going to up your score in a big way. All right, good luck, everyone. Uh, 2,500 players and you can still join in over the next second or two. All right, let's do it. Question number one, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness Stakes, and the Belmont Stakes are known as the Triple Crown, the Three Cups, or the Big Three. Here's a hint, competing thoroughbreds hope to be crowned the champion. Yep, number one is your answer. Only 11 horses have won the Triple Crown title. This year's Kentucky Derby winner, American Pharaoh, hopes to be number 12, and winner, of course, 
of the Preakness. All right, question number two. Horseshoes are celebrated as good luck, good karma, or good ideas. Some people believe it's the iron and the crescent U shape that give the horseshoe its supernatural quality, but the answer is good luck. If you're looking for it, that's what the horseshoe is for. For, for <laughs> folklore also tells of a wise blacksmith tricking the devil with a pair of red hot horseshoes. All right, moving on to question number three. Finish this old saying, you should never look a gift horse in the eye, ear, or mouth. Which one is it? Here's a hint. The phrase long in the tooth also comes from this. And yeah, that's right. The answer is number three. It's the mouth. The idiom means not to act ungrateful for a gift. It's said a horse's age can be determined by looking at how long its teeth are. Pat, is that true? You know. That is true. All right. Question number four. Finish the name of this famous racing horse. C blank. Is it C muffin, C horse, or C biscuit? Oh, I like sea muffin oh. personally. You may remember the 2003 movie about this undersized depression era horse. Of course, it's Sea Biscuit. Lots of fans of that movie in the house. Number three, Sea Biscuit never won the Triple Crown, but did defeat champion War Admiral in a special match at the Pimlico Race Course. All right, moving on to question number five. What is the official flower, not a lily like the asparagus produce, Pete, but of the Preakness Stakes? Is it the rose? Is it a black eyed Susan? Or is it carnations? Yeah, they're all official flowers of one of the races, but the answer is number two. It's Black Eyed Susans. Here's the thing, guys. Black Eyed Susans don't bloom until summer. So Viking daisies are used as a stand-in for the winner's flower blank. Don't be fooled by those Viking daisies. All right, question number six. Now, no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, unless the horse is the famous mm -mm -mm, Mr. Ed, Mr. Belvedere, or Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Poor Mr. Belvedere. Mr. Right. Actually, <laughs> that was, of course, Mr. Ed. It ran from 1958 to 1966. Uh, we all enjoyed it. I think the peanut butter made the horse talk, right? All right, moving on to question number seven. No, he's talking. I thought, okay, we sorry, really really no talk. peanut butter involved. <laughs> what is the Tony winning play about a horse sold to the British Cavalry in World War I? War Horse, Hooves of Fury, or Stallion Battalion? And the answer is number one, War Horse. It was an incredible show. It ended its two year run in January of 2013. The novel, the story started as a novel back in 1982, and it was eventually made into a movie by Steven Spielberg in 2011. Question number eight, which thoroughbred was the last to win that coveted triple crown? I'll have another. Sunday Silence or Affirmed. The last horse to win the coveted three legs was 37 years ago, and it was number three, Affirmed. 1978 was the last time a champion was crowned winner of all three races. All right, question number nine. When was the first, very first Preakness Stakes run? Was it 1873? Was it 1900 or 1881? Now, the Preakness, as we know, is the second jewel in Triple Crown, but the first race was run two years before the first Kentucky Derby. Derby. That the answer is 1873. Pete, did you get that one right? No, Ooh. Yes. Okay, well, we all guessed on that one. <laughs> However, the Belmont Stakes predates the previous by six years. It was first run back in 1867. All right, moving on to question 10. What is the name of the trophy given to the winner of the Preakness? Is it the Stanley Cup? Is it the Claret Jug? Or is it the Woodlawn Vase or Vase? You guys say Vase or Vase? I'm a Vase person. Vase. Yeah, so well, it is the Woodlawn Vase, number three. It's created by Tiffany & Company. It's the most expensive trophy in all of professional sports. It's worth a million dollars. And because of that, they they give the uh, winners a replica that's worth 30000 So, you know, I guess they can't give a million dollars away every time. But uh, anyway, you can find it on display at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Congratulations. Our web winner is 2606. Very solid top 10 scores in the 9,000s and 8,000s. Don't forget to fill out the form at the end of the game. And congratulations to all our players. Don't forget to watch the Preakness Stakes live coverage begins right after today's Ranger game, full of sports today here on NBC4. We'll be right back. Make your window decorating easy during Blinds to Go Spring Cellular Sale going on now. Take an additional 25% off our entire selection of energy efficient cellular shades. Choose from more than 15 styles and over 60 color options. Blinds to Go, Blinds for Life. Fruit flavored drinks, sweetened teas, and so called sports drinks say all sorts of things to sound healthy, but they can be packed with sugars. Drinking so much sugar eventually can bring on obesity and diabetes and its serious complications. These are not healthy choices. 
Replace them with water, seltzer, unsweetened teas, and fresh fruit. The ride of your life, brought to you by Nissan. Being on The Voice has been the ride of my life. You know, I've learned so much. I've met incredible people <laughs> that are sitting in the car. We listen to a lot of music. We listen to a lot of music at home. We listen to a lot of music in the car. Yeah, you know, we we uh, we definitely, there's always a soundtrack. In the summer, I play a lot of festivals, so the family will come to the festivals, and we'll drive all around the state, and uh, it's, it's a ton of fun, you know? Get the ride of your life at your local Nissan store and choose Nissan.com. There are a lot of channels on your TV, but only so many you want to watch. What if you could pay for the types of channels you want and not the ones you don't? Now, Fios brings you a totally new way to customize your TV at a price that's totally affordable, starting at $74.99 per month. Get custom TV, including internet and phone, price guaranteed for two years. Plus, get a $300 Visa prepaid card with your two-year agreement. Go to GetFios.com today. Cable just gives you channels. Fios gives you choice. Make your window decorating easy during Blinds to Go Spring Cellular Sale going on now. Take an additional 25% off our entire selection of energy efficient cellular shades. Choose from more than 15 styles and over 60 color options. Blinds to Go, Blinds for Life. All righty, folks, take your taste buds up to Harlem this weekend. The first ever Harlem Eat Up Festival is underway. 30 restaurants serving up specialties to celebrate the rich culture and history of Harlem. Our Jackie Reed making sure she got in on it. You can buy tickets for the events online. Chefs from across the country giving talks. They're giving cooking demonstrations and also a food stroll through the neighborhood and a celebrity chef cook-off. Not to be missed. Say a guy has to walk home from Rockefeller Center here in Midtown. Does he, does he need to steal an umbrella from someone's desk? Are you trying to get a ride, Gus? Is that uh, what's going no, on I'm here? willing to walk. I'm just, I want to know if I have to, no. Petty Larson, to steal giving you time. an umbrella. Rob Borrow Schmidt an umbrella. has one. Oh, he does Rob have a has storm one team umbrella desk. in the little cubby over there. Oh. But anyway, the forecast is mostly dry today. You're not going to need the umbrella, Gus. Showers have moved out for now. They're going to return later on tonight. So if Gus is heading to dinner around 7, 8 o'clock, he will need the umbrella and the raincoat probably. Some heavier downpours. 79 degrees for your high temperature mostly dry today. Showers return probably around 5, 6 o'clock. Oh, Pat, okay. All right. Are you snoring or snoring time. there? Did <laughs> 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 I was boring you? Or? Uh, no, never, never. Oh, oh, you, oh, no, oh, no, oh, ever. Oh, oh. Thank you, Raphael. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow on Today in New York, Bill Goldstein will tell us which books to take to the beach or the pool or if you plan to spend your summer time, summer time off. <laughs> and speaking of the pool and the beach, Francesco Bellotto will be here to get us all fixed up for fun in the sun. See you tomorrow morning at 6. Why turn to News 4 New York? Because we know your life is busy. So get News 4 everywhere. You heard me, everywhere. Just download the NBC4 New York app and click Watch Live TV now. Breaking news and Storm Team 4? Done and done. And at the end of the night, you can still sit down with the team you trust. Chuck Scarborough and Sabina Vargas on News 4 New York at 11. When it matters most, you want a new breed of medical center pioneering the latest breakthroughs in research. You want brilliant minds applying the freshest, most innovative thinking on a modern campus dedicated to cancer, cardiology, women, children, orthopedics, and the neurosciences. And you want it to be one of the nation's best. Because coming here should be one of the smartest decisions of your life. Hackensack University Medical Center. When it matters most. Summer's around the corner. Start the new season with Raymour and Flanagan's Memorial Day sale. Every style on sale. Believe me, they got furniture for your budget. Freshen any room with the best brands at